today's video, I'm going to be talking about the blood clotting mechanism. It's going to be a three or four part video series. So this video is just going to quickly introduce you onto the topic. So another way of saying blood clotting is um, hemostasis. This is a uh, the term for the mechanism of blood clotting and hemostasis actually means the cessation of blood or the stopping of blood. And I've included an image here showing you just a typical artery. You can see here we have the artery wall and the endothelium which is here. Now when we have breaking of an endothelial lining of a vessel, this exposes collagen proteins from the subendothelium connective tissue. To the blood so we have contact between the blood and the collagen proteins of the subendothelium so when this happens we initiate the following mechanisms so we initiate vasoconstriction platelet plug formation and the fibrin protein web formation but let's just talk about how the endothelium is just under normal conditions so under normal conditions the platelets repel each other and the endothelium wall now, the endothelium itself consists of simple squamous endothelium, which overlies the connective tissue collagen and other proteins that are capable of activating platelets to begin clot formation. So remember, underneath the endothelium, we have connective tissue, sorry, underneath the endothelium, we have the subendothelium, which consists of connective tissue collagen and other proteins that are capable of activating platelets to form a clot. So therefore, an intact endothelium physically separates the blood from the collagen and other platelet activators in the vessel wall. Okay, now let's talk about the endothelium cell, endothelial cells themselves. So they secrete something which is known as prostacycline, PGI2, and this is a type of prostaglandin, and it also secretes nitric oxide which acts as a vasodilator, and it acts on platelets to inhibit platelet aggregation. So remember, the platelets aren't initially meant to be stuck together while they're flowing within the blood. If they do do that, then that would be a pathological sort of mechanism because um, they're going to block the blood vessel if they're all sticking together while the blood's meant to be flowing. So this mechanism in place here, the secretion of the prostacycline and nitric oxide helps to keep the platelets opposing each other and preventing them from sticking together. So the plasma membrane of the endothelial cell contains an enzyme called CD39 and this has an active site which faces the blood. This enzyme CD39 breaks down adenosine diphosphate ADP into the blood to form AMP and one inorganic phosphate and this protective mechanism ensures the platelets don't stick together or to the vessel wall so blood flow isn't impeded. So remember these are all the mechanisms in place here to keep the platelets away from each other and to ensure that the endothelium wall is kept intact. So what happens when the blood vessel is actually injured? So the endothelium would therefore break, okay? So there'd be some form of um, breakage or some form of destruction of this part of the blood vessel wall. So what does that do? It, is, it exposes the underlying subendothelium. So there are glycoproteins in the platelet's plasma membrane, and they're able to, to bind to the exposed collagen fibers of the subendothelium. Now, something that you need to know there's something which is known as von Willebrand's factor, and it's sometimes abbreviated to VWF, von Willebrand's factor, and this is a protein which is produced by the endothelial cells, and this helps to bind the collagen and the platelets together. Now, without this factor, then the platelets wouldn't be able to bind to the collagen, so this is in place to help to bind these two together, the collagen and the platelets. Now, let's talk about the platelets. So, they contain secretory granules inside them, and when they bind to the collagen, the platelets themselves are going to break down and they're going to release these secretory granules, and these granules are going to release their products. So these products can be ADP, serotonin, and thromboxane A2. And this reaction is known as the platelet release reaction because they can, the granules are going to release the products. And the products are ADP, serotonin, and thromboxane A2. So when ADP and thromboxane A2 are released from the activated platelets, it recruits new platelets to the area and makes them sticky. So they adhere onto those that are stuck onto the collagen. So therefore, we have like a second layer of platelets which... Um, 
so therefore we have a layer of platelets which are over this um, initial one which is stuck. Then we have a second layer of platelets which undergo the platelet release reaction. Remember the ones that are then sticking on, they're going to undergo the platelet release reaction. So then we have more ADP and thromboxane A2 released and that causes more platelets to aggregate at the injury site. So what we have in the end is something which is known as a platelet plug which is formed because we have layers of platelets all sticking together on top of the site of injury. Now, the activated platelets also help to activate plasma clotting factors, and this leads to the conversion of soluble plasma protein, which is known as fibrinogen, into the insoluble fibrous protein called fibrin. Now, there are binding sites on the platelet's plasma membrane for fibrinogen and fibrin. So these proteins help to join the platelets together and strengthen the platelet plug. Okay, so this is the first part in the video series. Just mentioned the endothelium and the platelet plug formation. The next few videos will be talking about how fibrin is formed, the um, coagulation cascade and a few other topics as well. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you found this video useful.